Hi, this is Isabella from District Controls, and I'm here to introduce you to some great new features that have been added to the District Controls ECB Backnet and ECL Lawnworks 50 Series controllers. The main enhancements are the new graphically configurable schedules and calendars. I'll enter the Schedules and Calendars menu. Here we have the available schedules and calendars. Schedules are typically used to configure a weekly schedule. For example, the work week can be from Monday to Friday with working hours from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Calendars, on the other hand, let you globally specify holidays and other special days. A calendar can then be referenced in multiple schedules, allowing you to create recurring holidays only once. Let's start with weekly schedules. Here we have the weekly view of the schedule. By highlighting each weekday, a graphic representation of the daily schedule is shown on the right. To view more details for a specific day, we'll select a weekday, and here we can view the schedule for that day. Events that are marked with an asterisk indicate a default value. This is where I can change the default value or add a brand new event. The events without an asterisk allow me to modify or delete an event. I'll go ahead and modify this event. I'll change my start time to let's say 7 a.m. Notice as I turn the jog dial that the time changes in increments of 10 minutes. I can also do the same in increments of 1 minute by pressing and turning the jog dial at the same time. And I'll also change my end time. I'll exit and here we see the newly modified hours. Now to add a new event, I'll select another weekday. For example, Friday doesn't have any scheduled events, so I'll go ahead and add one. Here I can change my state to any of these values. I'll also go ahead and change my start time, let's say 7 a.m. again, and my end time to 6 p.m. When exiting the schedule configuration, I'll be asked to save or reject my changes. I'll go ahead and save. Now let's move on to special events. Special events are used to define special days or any exception to the weekly schedule. Remember that special events have priority over any weekly schedule. Here I have a list of predefined special events. I'll go ahead and add a new one. I'll add a special event such as a day when maintenance work will take place on the system. So with a date type, I'll go enter that specific date. So let's say Monday of the month of November on the 5th of this year. There are many different combinations that can be scheduled using any of these date types, whether it's a date, a date range, a week end day, or a reference to an existing calendar. At the bottom of the screen, there is a scrolling legend that indicates the meaning of the formats and the acronyms that are used in the special events screen. Now we'll take a look at the calendars. Calendar events define special event days. For example, on New Year's Day, I can set my system to be off. To do so, I'll select a calendar and I'll add a new event. Because New Year's Day is a specific day, I'll select date as the type and I'll enter the specific date here. So I'll go ahead and select the month of January on the first of every year. There are other special event days that can be added to a calendar. Here we have a date range, for example. To accommodate vacation schedules, companies may close for a few weeks in the summer. If so, then we can enter a time period using a date range as shown here. We have a start date and an end date. Or we can also have a week and day type for a holiday such as Labor Day, which falls on the first Monday of September of every year. Like I previously mentioned, a calendar can then be referenced in the schedules. So rather than defining the same event in multiple schedules, such as New Year's Day or any other recurring holiday or event, you can define them all in one calendar. To refer to a calendar, we'll have to go back to a schedule. We'll select Special Events, and we'll use a reference as a type. And here we can select the calendar we wish to refer to. If I exit, we see that we have the calendar reference here at the top of the list. That's it for schedules and calendars. I'll exit to my main menu. And another new feature that has been added to the 50 series controllers is found in the PID loop menu. I'll go ahead and access the PID loop menu here. 
As seen in our first video, the PID menu allows us to view, configure, and tune the controller's PID loop parameters, but also to see a graph, like the one on the right, of the PID loop's performance. The new option that was added is the graph period option shown here. This option is used to modify the PID loop plot scale to adapt, for example, your view to the PID loop's response time. Here we see that it's already set to three minutes. I'll modify this and I'll set it to half a minute. Now if we take a look at the graph on the right, we see that the x-axis values and the graph view have updated accordingly. This pretty much summarizes the new features for the 50 series controllers. You can also refer to our previous part 1 video for an overall view of all other features or refer to the related documentation on our website. Keep in mind that some of the features covered in these videos are available only with certain controllers. Thank you for watching and please refer to our website or contact your regional sales manager for more information.